exposure to screen type light between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. activates a specific circuit in a brain area called the habenula, it's a weird name, that lowers dopamine and creates a sense of disappointment. So it's pro-depressive. So every teenager in the world is depressing themselves. That's right. Or any adult. Yeah, we all do it. Who's on their phone after 11, after midnight, one, two, whether it be watching a movie, whether it be on an iPad, doesn't matter how close to a screen you are so on your phone. If you dim it way, way down, you don't get this dopamine. Or you wear the glasses or the biohacking effect. stuff. Or, you could do that as well. But Although it's, still, it's really the brightness of light, not the, the color of the light. So the studies by multiple groups are showing that from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., if you're on your phone, if you're looking at a TV or, or a iPad or screen consistently, it's going to make you more depressed. In theory, yes. Um, in practice, you would have to do that pretty consistently. So there's not like one exposure. It's gonna, expo- it's gonna or, dim dopamine. That's right, it's gonna blunt dopamine. And, and so our, our levels of things like dopamine and epinephrine, and serotonin, and these other so-called neuromodulators reflects the, our average behaviors, our average thinking. It's not like one thought's gonna crush your yeah. dopamine. The phone is starting to gobble up all that dopamine and all that space time duration path outcome stuff and we are wasting our cognition and we're wasting the the most precious gift we were given by mother nature and evolution is a brain that can teach itself things and that can predict things and that can look at the past can learn from elders and gain wisdom i mean all that stuff is what we were put here to do and um you know, uh, my dad said, you know, he thinks, I asked him if he thinks there are other galaxies, you know, because he's more versed in the in physics and the cosmos than I am. And he said, I don't know, but if there was, they, they probably extinguished themselves with social media because it's like mental chewing gum, people just kind of throwing away their cognition. And the dopamine thing, it's not that they're getting so much dopamine from using the phone. It doesn't feel like a big win. It's that they're spending it out, like spending, you know, $5 bills all day long. Pretty soon you're broke and you're yeah. exhausted. And so I worry about our use of these devices and what it's doing to our neurology. But I also know they're extremely important. Alan Levinovitz, who was on the podcast recently, had a book called uh, Natural. And uh, it's one of the things that he uh, he talked about in the book was that what we're doing is essentially the, the it's, we're, and he talked about this on Twitter and that's how I, I engaged with him. We were, we're taking most of our information and we're making it processed information by getting things off of Twitter, by getting things off of social media, you're getting this very weird interaction with people. It's boiled down to this very strange 280 character version that's not equivalent to an actual conversation with a human being or reading a book or watching a documentary or any of those things. It's this weird thing that's most of the information that you're receiving. And if you look at human beings that are on processed food diets, you see the body behaves very poorly and it, it just reacts very poorly and it's it's terrible. It's just not good for it. It's unhealthy. Well, equally unhealthy is processed information. And that, that was, this was his argument in his That's book. That's a great argument. It's a great argument. Yeah. It's a, I think we are in an adolescent stage of this technological intervention. And this, this will lead to whatever Neuralink is going to be and whatever the su- successor to Neuralink is going to be. I think things are going to get way weirder, I think, but there's potential for a beneficial aspect to it. And I think one of the potentially beneficial aspects are is that it seems like all of technology is moving us through, at least in this virtual sense of using phones and uh, computers, where the, ba- the boundaries between people and information are becoming smaller and smaller. The problem is the boundaries between physical people are becoming greater. There's more separation, particularly with COVID, right? There's more physical separation between people, but the boundaries between being able to access the thoughts of people is smaller. Right. So it's your your the beneficial aspects of like what we talked about with with your even your immune system and your your health and just overall mental well being, community, love friendship all those things you need to be right there you need right. to be right there with it. you need to hug each other all that stuff that's 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 crucial well, that's everything and, and hardwired into yes. us absolutely and with covid that's first of all everyone's scary because everyone could give you the bug and could kill you or kill your grandma 
And then on top of that, you're engaging in this processed form of communication all day long, and most of it is toxic. Right. I mean, if you're engaging with people on social media, then, I mean, I've, I've talked about this multiple times on the show. There's people I follow that don't even know I'm following them because I just have them bookmarked because they're just so toxic. I go and just, I want to know what they're doing. I'll just go to them like, look at this motherfucker. He's on Twitter 12 hours a day Amazing. yelling at people arguing constantly and I just imagine that their mind is a fucking chaos just a, a, a wreck just potholes and f burning buildings their head is just filled with shit but it's effective you know I, I, in a terrible way it's effective mm -hmm. it's like in the engineers uh, you know talk about signal versus noise and the brain is essentially an engineered machine it looks for where signal is high and above the noise and so there really is a payoff nowadays a short-term deleterious payoff but payoff nonetheless for being able to recruit people's attention recruit their autonomic nervous system get those into them into those modes of having to click and follow and scroll now I, I agree that I, I think social media like for instance I teach some science on social media I've, I've managed to great make great connections through social media but we have to be very judicious in our use of it. And that's hard for most people. And what I think is going to happen is that we're going to talk about signal noise. I think what's going to happen is we're going to start selecting for people that are very good at controlling their attention, are very good at separating themselves from technology as well as using technology. And so for people that are just rapidly consuming technology and information and thinking this is the way to live a good life or to get ahead, they're actually just falling into the noise. And mm. the people that are, I think it's one of the reasons why a select set of individuals have been so effective at controlling the landscape, the political landscape, the lots of landscapes, let's just say that. Um, and I think that we need to think about whether or not we're in the noise or whether or not we're, you know, paying attention to these big peaks of signal. And what's that? We're getting recruited. We're getting, you know, kind of groomed by these yeah. things. And it is scary. And at the same time, I agree. I think that eventually we will break through this. I do, because that's what the human animal is really good at. Yeah, and, I think we're but, in the technological dark ages. That's what I think. I think we're very well. I think Maybe. we're in just some Absolutely. weird thing where there's a lot of people going, this is not good, kids. This is not good. But most people are like, fuck you. And just in the just wading into the fray. Because it feels kind of good. Yeah, well, especially when you don't have real meaning or purpose in your life because you're unemployed and you're stuck at home because of COVID and you're scared. Well, that's that's a way that people occupy their mind and engage. And you, you're seeing a big uptick. Yeah. Big uptick in, the, well, at least the people that I'm paying attention to and the toxicity of their inner, their exchanges.